I must apologize to you. If you're new to the channel, welcome and thank you for the click. If you're a returning viewer, I'm glad to see you again and thank you for coming back. So, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I owe you an apology. In my last two videos, I show you how I made my desk, but I neglected to show you the how and the why. For that, I'm sorry. But if you bear with me for just a few minutes, I'll give you those details. I mentioned in my last video that I've worked from home for nearly 10 years. I finally got to the point where I wanted to upgrade my desk and remodel my office. When I started working from home, I took this desk base that I welded in high school and I replaced the top with a piece of cabinet grade plywood. I cut a couple feet off the end, rounded the corners, applied some cherry colored Danish oil and called it good. I later added a manual sit stand top and it was a nice change to not have to sit all day. But based on my configuration, it was kind of a pain to raise and lower the desktop. With as much time as I spend at my desk, I was developing some tension in my right shoulder and it got to the point where it was rather painful. I use my mouse a lot. I tried switching to a trackball. I switched to using a split keyboard, experimented with different keyboard positions. And eventually a friend of mine was telling me about a vertical mouse that he had bought. I had to try one. After getting one and using it for a while, my shoulder was getting marginally better. In speaking with my chiropractor, he made mention about having my right wrist extended outside the width of my shoulder for long periods of time can lead to this pain. I then had the idea to move the mouse so that it was directly in front of me. I could tell a difference almost immediately, but then the problem became having the keyboard extended too far out in front of me. That's when I came up with the idea for my mouse shelf. I tried a few different designs until I landed on this one. One day when I was on YouTube, there was an ad for an electric sit-stand desk frame with some custom options. It had me intrigued. So I hopped on Amazon and noticed that there are quite a few different desk type designs out there. Small ones, large ones, complete desks, and then just the frame. When I saw just the frame, rated for 300 pounds, it got me to thinking, I could make my own desk. And like most projects I've made, I could incorporate my own custom features. This is one of the things that draws me to woodworking. It gives me a chance to express and explore my creativity. Some people enjoy taking sets of plans made by others and making things. And if that's you, that's awesome. I hope you have a blast doing it. Woodworking is supposed to be fun. I hope it provides you with the outlet that you enjoy. For me, creating my own designs is that outlet. I mean, if I'm going to spend this kind of money on a desk where I'm going to spend most of my waking hours, I might as well make it the way that I want it. Probably won't make another one like this for quite a few years. If you get into woodworking thinking that you're going to save money making your own furniture, chances are pretty good you won't. Especially if you're going to make the same things that you can buy at the store. But if you're going to make unique one-of-a-kind pieces, you certainly can. Because if you were to have to pay somebody to make those things, those custom pieces, it'd get really expensive in a hurry. I knew I wanted to incorporate my mouse stand. This time, it looked more purposeful and less like a prototype. I wanted to make the keyboard tray adjustable in case I wanted to change positions there as well. And then there are the cables. My old desk, I had a piece of conduit where I would Velcro cables and power bricks and other things to try and keep this clean. It was a, we'll call it a single cheeked attempt. If the new desk is going to raise and lower, I'm going to need to do a better job of managing the cables so they don't get hung up whenever the desk is going up and down. When I was looking at the frames, not only was I checking the weight rating, but I was also looking to see what was the maximum size top that I could put on the frame. If the top is larger than what the desk can support, it could become very unstable and fall over pretty easy. Over the last few years, I started experimenting with different species of wood in my woodworking projects. 
Historically, I've done a lot of projects out of red oak because it's so plentiful where I am. As I started getting into the other species, I noticed that I could do some pretty neat patterns and contrasts. I found that I really like how walnut, bloodwood, and a lighter colored species all look together. For the lighter color, I've tried unstained oak, willow, maple, and ash. I had plenty of ash left over from another project. I also had a little bit of bloodwood sitting in the rack left over from the impossible dovetail ring box that I made for my daughter's wedding. Then I decided I wanted to incorporate walnut by using it for the breadboard ends and for the front and back edges. Knowing the kind of material I wanted to use, I then googled how much the top would weigh based on the perboard foot of each species. Based on what I calculated, I estimated the top to be around 75 or 80 pounds. With four monitors, desk lighting, a headset, desk speaker, two laptops, Wi-Fi, macro keypads, and so on, there is a crap load of signal and power cables. I had to have a way to manage all the cables, power bricks, power strips, and so on. So I made a cable trough where I could put all of this stuff. I made holes for the cables for the items on the desk. The keyboard shelf uses adjustable shelf pins. The holes for the pins are in two rows. The holes are an inch apart, and the second row is offset by a half an inch. Effectively, I can make adjustments in half inch increments. As I mentioned in the last video, the mouse stand is the most unique thing about this desk. The mouse stand, coupled with a vertical mouse, helps me to avoid shoulder issues that I dealt with in the past before I created it. It has a tilting adjustment so I can tilt it to level even when the keyboard tray is not so that the mouse doesn't slide off. It can also slide to the left or the right depending on the keyboard that I'm using or the other devices that I have on the keyboard tray. Before I started building the desk, I had a basic design, but I wanted to make sure I included the major design elements that I was talking about previously. When buying hardwoods, the dimensions on the boards are very different from one board to the next. You never know what you're going to be working with. You can make a rigid design, but if your material doesn't fit the design, then you can waste a lot of material. I will adjust my projects on the fly to try and minimize this waste. I do this for a couple of reasons. The first one is the fact that lumber can get really expensive when a bunch of it ends up in the scrap pile. And that brings me to the second reason. Even whenever you try to eliminate as much waste as possible, there's still a lot of waste. As you can see, I've had a bunch of it end up in the corner of my shop. It's kind of overtaken things. Some of these scraps will end up in the fire pit. Some are gonna get used on some small projects, hopefully soon. So be on the lookout for those videos as soon as I can get them done. With all the elements, including the mouse stand, the adjustable keyboard tray, the cable trough, large work surface, and the electric sit stand frame, this is everything that I want in a desk. In my 30 years of woodworking, this is one of my all-time favorite projects. If you haven't done so already, please hit like and subscribe, and then get out in the shop and put your creativity to the test. And I'll see you on the next one.